Hi guys, I'm here today to do part two of my recent book haul. So in part one I spoke about all the YA children's books and graphic novels I recently picked up and this is everything else basically. We have some non-fiction and some adult novels. So firstly I have a cookbook and that is Vegan On The Go, fast, easy, affordable, anytime, anywhere. So Johnny and I have been vegan since around Easter. Um, I can't remember like the precise date, I just remember that it was around Easter. Um, and we've been finding it um, really good, like we haven't been finding anyone near as difficult as we thought. And um, yeah, just learnt loads since we've been doing it in terms of all the stuff we've been sort of reading up about the industry. But I still remain not a very good cook in general. And I'm also, have always been really rubbish at inspiring lunches so I take the same stuff to work every day or some days most days I take nothing and I buy chips and beans like I act like a 10 year old this is literally what I had for school dinners when I was 10 so um yeah I want to try and take in more interesting things so I had a look for um vegan cookbooks that were mainly focused on lunches and this is precisely that um, I really like the fact that this has photos with every single recipe and it has sections so this is soups and salads um, then it has whole sections on, um, that's still soups and salads, but it has whole sections on sandwiches and then it has whole sections on like hot food you can take, um, little snacks, um, on how to make every single vegan dip you can imagine and there's also like a sweet section at the back. So yeah, I had a look through this and actually quite a lot of them look like they're things I could actually make and there's not too many ingredients so yeah, really looking forward to trying some of those out. Then one that I've seen everywhere, so I don't really need to say much about it, is I Am, I Am, I Am, 17 Brushes With Death by Maggie O'Farrell. So I haven't read any Maggie O'Farrell, and I feel like she's an author I could enjoy. I know she has quite a lot of novels out. So I'm gonna read this one really, really soon. It's quite short, and I've been intrigued by it since it came out. And then I'm hoping to enjoy it and to, you know, feel inspired to pick up some of her novels and perhaps go back to the start and read them in order. I don't think I've ever done that with an author, so um, that could be exciting. The only reason I've been a bit wary of this is because I've heard that it is a tiny bit gory in a couple of spots and I'm not great with blood or needles or anything like that. So yeah, we shall see. If there's any bits that get a bit too much for me, I'll just skip forward a page and, you know, check that it's over. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping it'll be fine and um, I've just heard phenomenal things about it, so there's that one. And then these next two um, non-fiction books are sort of quite similar to one another in um, themes. So this is 60 Degrees North, Around the World in Search of Home by Malachi Talek. So I had this on my um, wish list of sort of travel, um, memoir sort of non-fiction books, and then I recently read this author's debut novel, and when I looked at his other books, I was like, oh, I have this book on my wish list and I always liked the sound of it but didn't know if it would be any good and now I know his writing's beautiful I'm sure I'll adore this book. So um, I'll link my video up here where I spoke about his recent novel. I always forget the precise title because it's quite long. It's either at the valley at the centre of the world or at the island at the centre of the world. One of those two. So this is basically about the author travelling round all of the locations that are 60 degree, 60 degrees north on the um, globe. So he lives in Shetland and the um, 60 degree north line runs through Shetland, but it also runs through Finland, Sweden, Norway, Greenland, Alaska, Russia, and Canada. All of those places are places I would love to go. I feel like I, I sort of live in the wrong place in that I would really love to live somewhere colder and more rugged and more isolated and um, all these places sound quite like that. So I feel like this could be a phenomenal book. He writes beautifully and um, yeah, just be interested to hear a bit more about these places and his experience with them. So there's that one. And then this one came out last year. This is Icebreaker, A Voyage Far North by Horatio Clare. And um, this is about the author who goes on a trip for I think three or four weeks um, on this ship through Finland. And this book um, was published during some important date in Finland which was um, 2017. I don't know if it was like 100 years since their independence. Um, I apologise if that's wrong, I, I should have double checked but I know, I, as you can tell, I know nothing about Finland so um, I'm hoping this will teach me a little bit about it and also I've heard that the, um, the descriptions of ice and the ocean are really beautiful in this so again a sort of short book that I'm hoping will be um, very 
interesting and educational but also beautiful um, and this time of year is this hall is very much inspired by um, coming into the autumn and winter seasons as you will see by the novels as well so this one um, I actually picked up simply because I've had it on my wish list for a really long time and always meant to pick it up but because it's only published um, I think in Canada yes Canada um, it was super expensive it's by an indie press in Canada and um, it was always really pricey and then for whatever reason it massively dropped on Amazon uh, I don't know if maybe they're trying to clear some of their stock and so yeah I'm a really awful person who buys from Amazon hold my hands up but I bought this from Amazon uh, I don't know how to pronounce this and I probably should have looked it up but rather than um, embarrass myself here and also be really offensive I'm just not going to pronounce this so this is the title this is the author's name this book is by an Inuit author so it's translated from the Inuit language to French and then another translator translated it from French to English um, and the really amazing thing about this book is it's around 230 pages long however the let me try and find this the book has um, a whole section of some of the words in their original language and a lot of the book has been, has been left in its original language um, and this is a, an odd book in the fact so it says on the back it's an intimate story of an Inuit family negotiating the changes brought into their community by the coming of the white people. Composed in 48 episodes, it recounts the daily life of a strong and outspoken young widow, her daughter and their small semi-nomadic community in northern Quebec. But what I read at the sound of is this says it's as close to slice of life as you can get. So if you like plot driven novels, this really isn't that. And this is just a really close examination that almost doesn't feel like a novel of how these people live um, and how their life changes when um, white people become involved in it. So yeah, I feel like this could be really interesting and just something really different. So there's that one. And then um, these last few are all very sort of um, autumnal, um, sort of gothic feeling, um, which is like my favourite, this is my favourite type of time of year, well not right now because you know it's, it's still summer really, um, but you wait a few weeks and I'll be in my freaking element. So um, I got a few books to help me on my way. So um, I picked up another Mary Stewart. So I read a Mary Stewart earlier this year, which one did I read? I read Thorny Hold, um, which I, I enjoyed, I thought it was a really pleasant, cosy novel. And I meant to read more Mary Stuart this year. There's a lovely bunch of booktubers who um, read a Mary Stuart book together every month. I'm sure you've had lots of them talk about the books. And um, I hope to read more this year, but for, for various reasons, I've been really rubbish at reading, particularly a buddy reading. Um, and so I, I fell out of doing it. Um, but I saw the lovely ladies mention that they were gonna be reading this one, which is Wildfire at Midnight. And they were gonna be starting the book um, on the day I go on holiday so tomorrow I go or tomorrow when you're watching this I will be there um, so I go to um, Centre Parks for like Monday to Friday um, and the ladies were all going to be starting on the Monday and I thought perfect I'll be off work I'll have more than enough time to keep up and also it's probably a pretty um, cosy easy read to um, to get through when I'm on holiday with 11 other people so um this is about a lady who moves to the Isle of Skye following a heartbreaking divorce but then she, a girl's body is found just after she arrives and um, there might be a murderer on the loose who is sort of after our protagonist. So very excited about this being set on the Isle of Skye um, and just hope it's a really nice cosy read. So there's that one. Very beautiful cover as well. Then I have been meaning for the last year or so to get to some Iris Murdoch and for whatever reason haven't. I feel like she's an author that I could really really adore um, so it, it's just silly. So what I did was the other day I sat and read through the descriptions of all of her books um, and this is one of the ones I like the sound of the most. It's not one of her more famous ones. Um, I think the ones that everyone knows is the bell and is it the sea the sea it's not written in here yes the sea the sea um, i think they're the two most well known ones but i prefer the sound of this one um, mainly because it has a female protagonist gonna be honest but um also just really like the sound of this so i'm gonna read you the whole back of this which is quite short because this just sounds phenomenal and this is why i picked it up um, obviously the title helps as well 
When Marianne Taylor takes the post of governess at Gay's Castle, a remote house on a beautiful but desolate coast, she finds herself confronted with many strange mysteries. What kind of crime or catastrophe in the past still keeps the house under a brooding spell? And is her employer, Hannah, an innocent victim, a guilty woman, a lunatic, or a witch? So yeah, we like the sound of this one. I think it's set in Ireland, although I'm not 100% sure, so we'll confirm once I've read it. Do let me know if you've read any Iris Murdoch, particularly if you've read The Unicorn um, and, and what you thought of it. I'd be intrigued to know. So another author I've always meant to read, I think always, like for the last few years, is Alison Moore. And she recently had a new book come out in the last few months. This is called Missing. So I think this is her fourth novel. And all of her novels have been published by Salt, which are a local to me, independent publisher. And yeah, I just think she's an author I could really get along with. So I had a little look at what all of her books are about and I actually really like the sound of her new ones. I thought I would start at the end. So this is about a lady who moves from the Fens to the Midlands and then to Scotland and she's living there with her cat and her dog. And then she starts to get mysterious letters saying, I'm on my way home. And she thinks it could be um, either a ghost or her mis missing husband. And I think there's some sort of thing to do with the fact that she's a translator and this is all to do with like miscommunication and the right words and things like that. So yeah, it sounds quite intriguing. Um, and just, yeah, like I said, I, I really feel like Alison Moore is an author I could really enjoy. So I think this could be a really um, paid channing read. There's that one. And then lastly, I'm so excited about this one. Um, this is The Uninvited by Dorothy McArdle. So quite a few things to say about this one. Okay. It was originally published in 1942 and it's been republished by Tramp Press. They're an Irish publisher um, and they have a series called The Recovered Voices and this is number two in that series. Um, so what they do is they republish works that in their time, um, you know, weren't as popular as they could have been and they put them in these beautiful editions. So I love the fact that this is a gothic um, sort of horror story um, and it does quite look like that on the cover but then you turn it round and it's this ridiculously bright green which looks very sort of contemporary so I really love it um, and this sounds really really good so I'm hoping if I enjoy this um, I'll look at the rest of the books they've brought out in this series I have no idea if they share similar themes or if they're just about totally different things this is about a brother and a sister who flee their busy London lives to the beautiful but stormy Devon coastline. They head to a, a house on Cliff End, which is feared among the locals of a place of as a place of disturbance and ill omen. And then they sort of get involved with this place and its uncanny past and things happen. It's supposed to be very, very spooky. Um, and I read the first few pages and already really like the descriptions of the landscape. So yeah. Another spooky sort of gothic novel. Um, you wait, you'll see so many of them in the next few months from me. I'm obsessed. So um, yeah, just love the way this has been published as well, which helps. And this is a bit longer than all the rest because I've bought quite a lot of short books. And this is around 300 pages, but it looks longer because it's been published on such high quality paper. Um, so I'd really recommend um, checking out Tramp Press and their books because um, they're very, very beautifully published and they've got a really great selection. So there's that one. So those are all the books I picked up for myself a combo of this haul and the previous one. Do let me know if you've read any of the books I just showed you and also um, let me know if you've read any other books by these authors or if you have any books to recommend based on my very obvious obsession with sort of um, writing about cold locations and gothic novels. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!